Hello, my name is Travis Monk. This is one of a series of videos on bacteria and viruses. This video will describe what a virus is, as well as how they can be classified. One means of classification, the shape of a virus, is illustrated on this slide. Viruses are not considered living organisms. Why, might you ask, are we studying viruses that I just said aren't living in biology class, which is the study of life? The reason is because viruses affect living things. Viruses are not considered living for a number of reasons, four of which are listed on this slide. They don't grow. They don't metabolize energy. That is, they don't do cell respiration. They can't reproduce on their own, and they're not made up of cells or cell parts. Viruses are very small. We have talked about eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells already. The picture on this slide shows how the three compare in size. Eukaryotic cells can be hundreds or thousands of times larger than prokaryotic cells. A red blood cell next to E. coli, which is a rod-shaped bacterium, illustrates this. Viruses are considerably smaller yet. In the blown-up picture of the bacillus bacterium, the rod-shaped bacterium we just referred to, numerous viruses are shown. They can be hundreds to thousands of times smaller than even prokaryotic cells. In addition to being very small, viruses are very simple as well. They lack any cell structures and are essentially a protein coat or capsid that surrounds a nucleic acid, either DNA or RNA. There's not much else worth mentioning. Some viruses possess another coat outside of their capsid that's referred to as an envelope. An envelope is basically a cell membrane that just viruses possess. This membrane allows a virus to move into a cell very easily, just as endocytosis typically occurs in cells to bring in new materials. Viruses, just like bacteria, can be classified by their shape. While there are countless different shapes, the two most common simple viral shapes are icosahedral and helical. A helix, or helically shaped virus, is shown on the left. DNA is sometimes described as a double helix, a twisted ladder, just as this virus is shaped. The Ebola virus is one example of a helically shaped virus. The other common viral shape is an icosahedron. Icosahedral viruses appear to have 20 triangular faces, but usually just look spherical in shape. HIV and influenza are two examples of icosahedral viruses. Another way that viruses can be classified is by their genetic material. As the image on this slide shows, viral shape, the presence of an envelope, as well as the type of genetic material can help to break down the potential 100 million viruses on Earth into some orderly fashion. There are certainly not 100 million viruses that affect humans, probably only hundreds, but it's still useful for their classification. The three types of viruses that we'll be describing in the upcoming slides are DNA viruses, RNA viruses, and then a particular type of RNA virus referred to as a retrovirus. DNA viruses are named because they contain the nucleic acid DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid. DNA viruses function by injecting their DNA into a host cell and incorporating their DNA, referred to here as vDNA, where the V stands for viral, into the host cell's genome. The virus then takes over the host cell's DNA replication machinery and more viruses are produced, which then can go out and infect new cells. DNA viruses can contain single or double-stranded DNA, and one example of a DNA virus would be the herpes virus, which is shown on this slide. RNA viruses contain the nucleic acid RNA, or ribonucleic acid. These viruses have absolutely no DNA present inside of them. Just like DNA viruses, they inject their genetic material into a host cell, which is then added into the host's genome. Through the process of transcription, new viral DNA is made, which can be assembled into new viruses, which would go out and infect new cells. Just like DNA viruses, RNA viruses can be single or double-stranded. One example of an RNA virus is the influenza virus, exhibited on the right. Single-stranded viruses are much more prone to mutation, as there is no complement to spell check what's being copied. As a result, you need to be vaccinated against such viruses, like influenza, every year. And even then, it's not completely effective against all forms of influenza. The last classification of virus that we're going to be referring to is a type of RNA virus called a retrovirus. Normally in cells, DNA is transcribed into RNA, 
which is then translated into a protein. The term retro sometimes means backwards. The term retrograde, for example, means to move backwards. Retroviruses do the process of transcription backwards, using RNA to make DNA, using a specific enzyme called reverse transcriptase. Once viral DNA is made, it's incorporated into the host cell's genome, which is then used to produce more viral RNA. There are not a lot of retroviruses out there, but the reason that they're worth mentioning is HIV, shown on the right on this slide, is an example of a retrovirus. HIV stands for Human Immunodeficiency Virus and causes AIDS, Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome, which is the leading cause of death in Africa and one of the top causes of death worldwide. That is the end of this video introducing viruses and viral classifications. If you're interested in learning more about bacteria and viruses or any other topics involving biology, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.